Genesis is without a doubt the most important book in the Bible. Now, I know many of you are thinking, ah, that's not true. It's true. Without the book of Genesis, we would not understand man's current relationship with God, our need for redemption, why Israel is regarded as God's chosen people, and God's ultimate plan to use Israel to bless all the nations of the world. Truly, Genesis is the foundation for the Bible, which, of course, we know is God's revelation to man. In fact, no other book in the Bible is quoted as often in the other books of the Bible. There are at least 165 passages in Genesis that are either directly quoted or referred to in the New Testament. We're not even talking about the Old Testament. And many of these passages in the New Testament are alluded to more than once. So there are over 200 quotations or allusions to Genesis in the New Testament. Now, the characters in Genesis are referred to in the other books of the Bible more often than any of the other characters that are mentioned in the other books, with only one exception. Who would that one exception be? David. Who said David? Yeah, with the exception of David. Abraham is mentioned by name in 15 of the Old Testament books, not counting Genesis, and 11 of the New Testament. Jacob is mentioned in 20 Old Testament books, and we're not... We're not counting Genesis. And 17 New Testament books. Israel is mentioned in almost every book of the Bible. And every time it is, is an, it is an acknowledgement of the foundational authority of the book of Genesis. So without a doubt, I can say, Genesis is the most important book in the Bible bar none. And hopefully, if I do a good job of communicating, if I do a good job of teaching, you'll understand why it's so important by the time we finish tonight. So let's talk about the structure of the book and its purpose. Genesis is divided into two main sections. Chapters 1 and 11 and chapters 12 through 50. Chapters 1 through 11 deal with primeval history. Chapters 12 through 50 deal with the history of of the patriarchs. And when I'm talking about the history of the patriarchs, I'm talking about the origin of the nation of Israel and their purpose as a nation chosen by God. Now, does everyone know what I mean by primeval history? You know, sometimes we throw out those words and people think they know what they mean, but they're not quite sure. So let me explain what I mean by primeval. If you do an etymology study on the word, in other words, you're going to study the origin and how it evolved and how its meaning evolved over time, you would find out that the word primeval is a compound word. That simply means that it's made up of more than one word. In this case, it's made up of two words. The Latin prefix primus, which means first, and the Latin root word, evum, which means age. So when you combine these two words, it literally means first age. So it's talking about the very first age of something, or as we would say today, the origin. So when I say primeval history, I'm talking about the very beginning of things, such as the origin of the universe. And we talk about the origin of the universe, we're talking about matter and energy. The laws of thermodynamics tell us certain things. And one of the laws of thermodynamics tells us that matter and, matter and energy can neither, be can neither be created or destroyed. But wait a minute. Has matter and energy always been here? Well, if matter and energy has always, always been here, then why do we have the order that we have? And the reason why I say that, the second law of thermodynamics, also known as the law of entropy, states that all things go from order to disorder. So, all of a sudden, we're finding out things that science didn't even know anything about until probably this last century. It also gives us the origin of order and complexity. And when you do consider the law of entropy, the concept of irreducible complexity blows your mind. It gives us the origin of our solar system, the earth, the sun, the moon, the planets, the stars, etc. The origin of life, the origin of man. The origin of marriage, the origin of sin, the origin of the different languages that we have in the nations, the origin of Israel. And we could go on and on. And that's what I mean by primeval history. The very beginning of things. 
So the first section of Genesis deals with the origin of things. And that's chapters 1 through 11. And these chapters explain so much about our world. And you'll see why I say that as we study these chapters. Now, the Jews refer to this book as the Rashith. Because in the Middle East, during the Old Testament period, it was customary to refer to a book by its initial word or phrase. And the book begins with this phrase, in the beginning, which is the Hebrew word, the Rashith. Now, in the third century B.C., certain scholars translated the Old Testament from Hebrew into Greek. Now, remember, this is three centuries before Christ, so there is no New Testament. But because of the Babylonian captivity, most of the Jews had ceased speaking Hebrew. Therefore, they couldn't read the Bible. So these Hebrew scholars came in and they translated the Bible from Hebrew into Greek. And that's known as the Septuagint. And those scholars, those who translated the Bible from Hebrew into Greek, titled the book Genesis. Genesis means origin. Now, when we transliterate that Greek word into English, we get Genesis. In fact, I was going to bring my whiteboard up here and I was going to actually spell it out in Greek and then give you the equivalent letters in English and what you would find. And many people translate it, or I don't mean translate, they pronounce the Greek word genesis as genesis. But we pronounce it in English genesis. And of course, genesis means origin. And that's what the book is all about. 